Uh, welcome to the Aima <laughs> uh, AO1 Pro. Um, I got this about maybe two or three days ago. Well, I'd say maybe a week ago. Anyway, um, I actually had a chance to sit down and listen to it, and I was actually pleasantly surprised. He originally sent me all the um, information on it. I didn't check any of the information. I didn't click on any links. I just basically said sender, and uh, he did. Uh, I sat down, listened to it. You know, I was actually expecting it to be the same as most Class D amps, which it's not. Um, further investigation, obviously, I looked it up, and it's got a different chipset on it than the A07. Um, this one has a TPA3116 at 24 volts versus, obviously, the... Uh, TPA 3255 for the uh, AO7. And I noticed a difference right away uh, in the sound alone. Um, one thing it's not, it's not, um, it's not as dynamic as the AO7. Uh, it's a more laid back sound. Uh, one thing I did find is when I did hook it up to the, well, actually, I didn't find anything, but uh, it will power the uh, pokes and the uh, the Fluon speakers, no no issues whatsoever. Uh, leave it even at uh, loud volumes, uh, which I was surprised. It does have one little downfall. It's not a big problem, but um, this actually is a good design for a box. Um, if you're using it for audio, unless you're actually sitting everything on the floor, what's good about this is when you have the wire, especially really thick audio uh, cables coming up to it, it's long enough that even if it's up to the edge, it won't tip. And it's also got enough weight where it won't slide back. And this one here is holding on for dear life. It's a nice design. It just needs to be bigger, longer, for it to work in an audio setup. Um, like these rubber feet are holding on for dear life. Yeah, these wires here just want to pull it on down there, which it already has. Um, so there's, a, there's that. Uh, I would personally make it longer. But I'm not the producer of it, so, or the uh, the maker or designer. Uh, it does have some interesting tone controls. Uh, so it's got bass, tremble, and then it's got middle. Uh, it actually kind of messed with me at first. I didn't look up what it was, and I had it turn everything all the way over to the right, turned all the way up, and uh, it sound it sounded like it was reshaping the the music in a certain way. I find. Uh, the, it's best suited right at the middle. Um, it sounds better. <laughs> That's just I find the uh, in the middle position for the middle uh, pot is the best. Uh, the RCA to BT switch or Bluetooth switch works pretty good. It's dead silent. I mean I've, I've not heard anything out of this at uh, this amp. Um, the pots are all clicky. There's a little bearing in them that uh, every time you turn it. it does a couple of clicks. Uh, also, the um, the knobs are all textured on the side on the sides, like a um, sort of like a CB radio. You can see the dimples on it. Pretty good. I love the uh, tone controls and the knob itself. Um, the Bluetooth is a really good feature on this. What I do like about it is I can hook it up to my phone, walk around in the house, and basically listen to a track through my stereo. Which I was doing with my old setup, but my old setup had, like when you would connect to the Bluetooth, they would have um, an audible warning that you're connected and everything else, which was kind of irritating. This one here is pretty dead quiet. Uh, even when you connect to it, it doesn't hiss or pop or do anything. You, you wouldn't even know it was connected unless it's, um, when you turn it on, it will blink blue and, white, uh, and red. And then when it obviously when it uh, connects, it turns blue. Uh, it's pretty quick to connect, and this is probably the only device that I've tested so far where I'm living that three stories down, I could still adjust the uh, stereo from down there, and it wouldn't even disconnect at all. Wouldn't even hesitate to disconnect. It's got a really good module in it for the Bluetooth. Uh, I can't even get actually Wi-Fi in the basement, so this 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 is. Good pass for that. It's pretty good. Um, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it'll be a little bit different. I figured we would just unbox a little bit here. 
and show you what goodies are in the box. That's a pass sticker. You got your warranty card. I mean, your instructions and basic basic instructions on the different uh, plugs and stuff. Uh, Bluetooth dongle. Your power supply, which is 24 volts at 4 amps. That's uh, about 96 watts. Decent power cord. It actually has the holes in the end. <laughs> Are, are, are important actually. They, they serve a purpose. Uh, and there it is. Really nice machining on this case, by the way. Best I've seen this far. That's really nice. I love the um, textured knobs. There's the screws we'll have to take out. There's the back. That's a uh, line out. Okay. I love how they put a uh, protection knobby on the uh, RF uh, plug. They're actually sensitive to dirt and crap, so that stuff. So that's a that's a good feature. Uh, I was hoping that I could overvolt one of these. I cannot. Um, there's going to be a regulator in it, and I've actually tried it in the past. I was playing around with the um, Dell Poetry, and. Uh, I put it up a volt, and that's all it took. It just went, and uh, no more Bluetooth. So they're very sensitive to um, voltage swings. So this one would have to be used as is, no modding. It doesn't get hot, so you really wouldn't need to cut any holes or anything in it. Uh, it's going to make a really nice desktop setup. Anyway, let's uh, get downstairs and take it apart. Let's see what it looks like and see the goodies. So here we are. Um, excuse any noises in the background. I got a dog walking around. And everything else. Um, so yeah, we're gonna take that apart. I'm not sure where to start, really. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five in the back. Two on the ends. And the only way we're gonna get the faceplate off is to remove the. Um, that nut there, yeah, they're all nutted, so those will all have to come off. Oh, I'm hoping this has, um, obviously it's going to have the off amps will be switchable <clears throat> oh boy I really do need a new wow these are too loose I'm good doing it to find the proper tools okay these side screws here need the proper bit or else you will strip them out Don't laugh at my screwdriver. <laughs> I've needed a new one for a while. I'm actually surprised it hasn't turned in the handle. <laughs> it's that bad. There's no magnet in the chuck, and it does turn in there. <laughs> kind of a joke, but I uh, keep putting it off to buy a new one. Okay, that one's in plastic. That one be a... It's got a point on it, so I'm not going to be able to put that anywhere else. Self-threading screw is what it is. Into plastic. If you put one of those square ones into the plastic, you'll pretty much uh, crack it, so make sure you don't mix that up. And all it's really holding is the bracket for the RCAs. Uh, if you do crack it, yeah, it's going to suck when it starts to fall into the unit. Equal pressure on it. Wow. I can literally feel that the uh, torque on each one of these screws are pretty even. Alright, I'm going to have to find some needle nose to get those out because we still aren't coming apart yet. Let's 
This one takes a bit to get into. No, the other one was easier. Well, the other ones are easier because there's only four screws. This one's built like a tank. Let me get the rest of these. These are time consuming. Interesting way of designing it. <clears throat> okay, to hold the faceplate on, you have these four obviously lock nuts, plus the faceplate has a bracket on each end, which isn't bad design. And this is solid aluminum, it's not even bolted or anything. Um, let's slide it out this way. Well, I am surprised. I honestly thought that the op maps on this could be swapped out. They cannot. And there is a view of the amp. Decent parts. Um, let's see if I can see with my loop. And I can't. I can't see the name of the caps. Sam. Samson, Sam Ox, if they're not uh, like Sony or anything like that, <clears throat> that there is a relay. There's your Bluetooth module, which it is a module. Very good one at that. Uh, it does suck that it doesn't have the swappable uh, <clears throat> preamps, which is kind of disappointing because you really can't. This definitely would be a setup for like uh, a small setup for like a computer for like a, a monitor whatever um, yeah I mean you can't really can't modify it at all or change anything on it I mean you could uh, but you're working with surface mount and you would have to shield all these capacitors to get these off and uh, I don't think it'd be worth it but it's cool to see the inside it's the back I'm not going to take the heat sink off. We've seen it before. Well, actually, I will. Because we got to see if they used any grease or anything. Okay, they got two spacers on each side of the heat sink. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It's a dual amp. Hmm. Instead of one uh, TPL. A GPA, I don't know how they're called. It's got two. Two separate channels. That's why it sounds different. That's interesting. And honestly, it's a really good amp, guys. It is. It's just it's too bad it can't be overdriven or anything. It can't be. There's no modification whatsoever with this. But it is a really good amp. I love the two-channel. Cool. Later, guys.